What's up guys, JR Raymond here back again at the training center in TurboTech in Chesterfield, Michigan. I completely forgot that I was giving away a free bowling ball of choice to a subscriber uh, at the 10,000 subscriber mark. That was like 5,000 subscribers ago. I'm supposed to do it at the World Series, meant to do it at Vegas, completely forgot. So we're gonna do it right now at the end of this video, uh, right after we talk about some of the training techniques and things you can do at home to get ready for your bowling event or just to get better at bowling, so stay tuned. What's up guys? So we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the things you can do at home to try and train and practice to get ready for events and to get better at bowling in general and work on physical things that you need to get better at or try to, try to feel things just a little bit better. First thing I want to do is I'm going to show you the first tool that I would use at home is it's just grabbing a little football. Something like this can help you to understand uh, the release point of snapping the wrist off almost like a frisbee uh, and getting that and understanding. And the football is one cool little tool that can do that. And it's just standing there and just trying to spin the football off your hand and create a spiral. And it's probably better to actually throw it to somebody because now you're going to be like this here and you're going to be spiraling it off your hand to throw it to somebody. So when they throw it and they throw it to the other person, you can see it spiraling towards the other person. And if it's spiraling, you have a pretty good idea that you're doing the right thing with your hand and the release. The other thing at home you can do is you can get yourself a little basketball like this. This is a perfect tool for practicing a proper release pressure. So you're not going to be squeezing the ball like this to where you have to squeeze and hold on and then in order for the ball to fall off your hand or to come off your hand, you have to release with your fingers. We don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is just like my video said earlier about proper squeezing technique or proper grip technique is we want to squeeze the opposite way. So we want to press the thumb the opposite way, the nail going to the back of the, of the ball. Almost in the straighter, you can have your thumb probably the better. So that way the pressure's up here. So when you get to the bottom of the swing, you don't have to do much other than when it gets here, it just kind of falls off your hand in that spot and it releases at the same spot every time. So you find yourself a wall, uh, the, you know, the, the garage or something anywhere, something that's not, you're not going to damage and you just practice releasing the ball without having any grip pressure and bouncing it off that wall over and over again without the grip pressure of squeezing to let it go. Let it come off your hand at the bottom at the proper spot. The other thing you can kind of do is try to really gain an understanding of your axis and your rotation and try to figure out what you need to do with your hand to get your rotation to change. So I put a piece of tape on this ball so you can kind of see as I roll it, that tape would be, my axis would be here. It's always going to be facing that side and you're going to be, you know, rolling the ball and seeing where, where do I have to change my hand to get that tape on the side to do something different. So I obviously, to get the tape rotation to go up, I have to bring my hand inward and roll it this way so that way the tape's kind of facing me. You know, so it's just a way to kind of play around with the ball and see if you can get it to do different things. And then you can take that technique and go and do it at the bowling center, put the tape on your bowling ball and kind of do the same thing and see what you have to do to get the rotation to do what you want it to do. Whether it be higher rotation or lower rotation, it's up to you, whatever you think you need to work on. Some of the things you can work on at the bowling center is you can go and get yourself some of these little cones. These are pretty neat. They're real cheap. Any sporting goods has them. They're real flexible. They're not hard, so the ball's not going to ramp up off of them. If it hits it, it just scoots them out of the way. Um, so, and then you just have to reset them up. But you take a couple of these and you make a gap and you try to throw the ball in between two of them. Um, and you can do multiple gaps all the way down the lane to really work on your angles and work on your targeting a little bit. This kind of goes back with you know, my whole theory of you don't want to necessarily try to target just one single board um, because then that's going to tense you up. You're always going to feel like you're trying to split boards. You're just trying to get the ball going in the right direction at the right angle. And if you hit a couple different boards, that's fine um, because we should be good enough to be able to select the right ball that we have a couple of boards room for error anyway. So um, again, if you have to hit a single board to score, um, then I guess you just need to grind and you're probably not gonna do very well if the scores are a little bit higher. So these are some of the things you can work on. But then you have one more tool that you can get anywhere is just to have a dumbbell. 
Now, I know this looks silly and you probably will feel silly being out on the lanes, but you wanna make sure you take this and you put it in your opposite hand of your bowling hand and then you're going to uh, be bowling with this in your hand and try to think of keeping this out in front and not letting it whip behind you at all. Some people have a big issue of whipping their shoulder back, which then causes their bowling shoulder to come forward and collapse and then it causes everything to do the wrong thing. You wanna keep your opposite shoulder quiet as possible to allow your bowling shoulder to be able to do whatever you want it to do. Because if I whip back, now my right shoulder has to come with it. My bowling shoulder has to come with my left shoulder when it goes back. I can't whip this back and keep the shoulder back and try to throw the ball where I want to throw it. It doesn't work that way. So these are just some of the things that we want to work on. But now I hope that helps people. I hope people are able to kind of go work on a few different things. The biggest thing you can actually do is go home and just visualize. You need to be able to just see the things you want to happen before you actually make them happen. That's, I mean, it sounds cliche, but it is what people do. It is what the best people in the world do. No matter if it's bowling or any sport, they have the ability to visualize and see what they want to see and do what they want to see, uh, do what they want to do because they see it. So go home, spend a little bit of time each day visualizing your ball coming off your hand the right way. Visualize the feel that you want to have. Visualize the roll that you want to have. Visualize the ball going through the pins the right way. Visualize everything that you want to happen and then go make it happen when you practice. Just do this every single day a little bit each day and your mental game will actually get a little bit better. So now let's give away that bowling ball. I got one lucky winner who's going to win a ball of choice. I went through and just selected somebody random um, who had shared my post on Facebook and had and was a part of the subscriber list uh, on this channel. So that one lucky winner is going to be Jeffrey Boyd. If you are Jeffrey Boyd, make sure to send me an email at betterbowlingfitness at gmail.com and we will uh, talk and try to figure out what bowling ball you want to have so that way we can send it out to you and uh, you'll be good to go for winning. But congratulations. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing. And thanks for following the Facebook page. Um, if you haven't already followed my Facebook page, make sure to go do that because there will be giveaways on that page as well as this page. I know there was a few people who don't have Facebook who were upset. They weren't able to be a part of it. So next time we will do something different to make sure everybody can be involved. But until next time, guys, make sure to subscribe, make sure to share, and we will see you for the next video. Okay, thanks. Take care. Yeah. <laughs>